Welcome to another tutorial on PFSense Firewall. On my screen you can see that we have the internal uh, subnet with four uh, servers 192.168.0.188/30 starting from .188 and the last server here is .191 and the intention here is to automatically NAT the internal subnet starting from dot 188 to an external uh, IP block with 4 IP 14 dot 30 and in the reverse direction the external subnet with 4 IP address getting translated back to the internal subnet 192.168.0.188 automatically using the NATing which is going to be one on one NAT on PFSense firewall so that you don't end up configuring multiple NAT rules for one to one NAT on PFSense firewall and the same can be achieved by configuring a single one is to one NAT for the subnet and on my screen you can see the source we have taken as 14140.40.12 for the testing purpose which will initiate the traffic and then will be accessing the internal network via the virtual IP 14140.50.188.30 and the LAN interface is 192.168.0.109 which connects the internal servers and the WAN interface is having an IP of 14140.40.109 so in the table you can see the translation that is going to be achieved in this particular tutorial so the entire subnet which is the external subnet 14140.50.188.30 is going to be translated to 192.168.0.188.30 and vice versa from the internal subnet to the external subnet and the individual natting one is to one natting you can see on my screen I'll share the link for the diagram in the description for your reference now uh, let's get started on the uh, pfsense firewall so this is the pfsense firewall running on 272 release first of all we'll have to go to the firewall click on NAT select one is to one NAT click on add and address family we are going to update it as IP4 interfaces WAN external subnet is going to be the IP address that you can see on my screen WIP 14140.50.188/30 so we are going to use subnet And you don't have to specify the subnet here because in the next section where you see the internal IP if you click here and put network you will have to update the internal subnet which in my case is going to be 192.168.0.188 as you can see on my diagram the internal subnets and the server IPs actual server IPs and the subnet that you put here will be taken into consideration for the external network ID that you have given so this particular slash 30 will apply to 14140.50.188 and the other section description you can put it as uh, subnet to subnet NAT click on save and this is also called uh, IP address shifting and um, now we have the policy in place which says the external subnet 14140.50.188 slash 30 
translate it to the actual uh, internal server subnet 192.168.0.188 slash 30 as per my uh, scenario on the diagram you can refer the same for the IP schema and next thing is the rule go to firewall click on rule and in the van since the van will be receiving the traffic from external network onto the firewall van interface click on add clear um, in the address family put it as IPv4 TCP protocol you can remove that and put as any protocol source is going to be any destination if you would like to have a granular uh, settings you can basically add the network let me try to add the internal subnet and for your information the natting for one is to one will happen first and then the policy lookup will happen so you will have to enter the destination after the translation which in our case is going to be 192.168.0.188 And I'm going to update the subnet slash 30. And click on save. So now we have the rule in place that allows the traffic from outside to inside for the destination 192.168.0.188 slash 30. And yep, that's it. If you are initiating the traffic from the same subnet, for example, in one is to one that if you are configuring the subnet 14, 140, 50, 188, and your external interface which is WAN interface in the same subnet and the traffic is initiated from the same subnet well try to configure the virtual IP and then the uh, proxy ARP entry for the IP that you would like so that the WAN interface can proxy for any ARP request on WAN interface for 14.140.50.190 in my case since the traffic will be initiated from a different subnet 14 140 40 12 in our case so in order for that traffic to reach the pfSense firewall the user would require the MAC address of van 14 140 40 109 and like I said if there is any scenario where you would like the pfSense firewall to proxy for any R request for 14 140 50 188 subnet well you will have to add the entry in the virtual IP section for the proxy ARP so now everything is in place now, now let's try to test the settings so this is the uh, source this is the user window machine with an IP of 14140412 exactly how we have on the screen in the network diagram and we have the pf sense firewall so that we can take a capture and understand the traffic flow let me try to um, take a capture on the pf sense firewall to understand the natting xn01 is the wan interface So we have initiated the TCP dump on WAN interface for the ICMP traffic. So let's try to initiate some traffic from the source, which is our window machine. So this is the source let me try to initiate the traffic and you can see I'm able to ping and the same thing uh, we'll try to 
verify on the pfSense firewall. This is the CLI access, as you can see on the WAN interface. 14140.40.12. So this is the source IP 14140.40.12, and the destination is 14140.50.188 and the reply packet and we can verify the translation based on the traffic sent out from the LAN interface which is XN0 let's try to do that to understand the translation so here you can see that the source which is 14140 and destination 14140.50.188 is getting translated to 192.168.0.109 and the destination 192.168.0.188 which is the actual destination so here we are doing the source NAT as well as the destination NAT by default on the pfSense firewall and I'll show you the configuration once again for your reference so nothing major that we have done here so in the NAT reflection we are using the system default and we can try to access the other servers as well So the second server, which is 189, is also accessible. Let's try to check the reachability for the third server, which is dot 190. Well, that is also reachable. Let's try to access the last server, which is 191. OK, again, it is reachable. And the same thing we can verify from here and you can check another uh, thing here in the state table on the WAN interface so you can see here 14140.40.12 which is the source coming for the destination 14140.50.191 getting translated to internal IP and at the same time you can check for the other translation see here with a single uh, NAT policy we are able to achieve the automatic IP address shifting from internal IP to external IP and the same thing you can check it on the LAN as well so this is the uh, translated source which is the pfSense firewall LAN interface IP towards the destination 192.168.0.190 so this particular actual source is tra getting translated to 192.168.0.109 and the destination as well uh, let's try to uh, check the traffic flow from the inside network to the outside network as well since now we have checked the traffic flow from outside network to inside network now let's try to do the reverse traffic flow check So we'll have to create a LAN policy to allow the traffic from inside to outside. Now let's try to select the interface as LAN, address family IPv4, check it as protocol any, source is going to be any, destination, well I have a specific IP address. So let's try to check the same. So this is the uh, source IP that we are using for testing, which is a window machine. 
So let's try to save this, apply the changes. Now coming back to our uh, destination, which is going to be the server. Let's try to pick one server, which is 192.168.0.190. And let's try to access the same. So this is the server. So this is the internal server. 192.168.0.190. So I have a specific route, 14.140.40.12, go through 109, which is the PFSense firewall LAN interface. Now let's try to check the uh, traffic on the PFSense firewall. As you can see, 192.168.0.190 towards 14.140.40.12. Now let's try to check why is it failing. On the client machine, the window machine, there was some issue with the firewall configuration. I disabled the firewall and uh, immediately after disabling the firewall the issue was fixed and uh, i'm able to ping let me try to initiate the traffic one more time from the server which is 192.168.0.190 and on the pfsense firewall since we already have the one is to one that configure should be getting translated to 14.140.50.190 let us try to initiate some traffic as you can see i'm able to ping on the firewall this is the capture on the lan interface where you can see that the actual source is 192.168.0.190 which is the server ip 14.140.40.12 is the ip that the server is trying to reach out to externally and if I take the capture on the WAN interface, you will see that the source, which is 192.168.0.190, is getting translated to 14.140.50.190. And is getting out. So on the client machine, I have the Wireshark capture running. As you can see, so these are the traffic from the source 1141405090 because of the translation on the pfsense firewall if you initiate the traffic from any other source like 192.168.0.188 the pfsense firewall will automatically translate this back to 1441405080 and let's say if you initiate the traffic from .189 the pfsense firewall will automatically translate it to 1441405080 that's all in this video and um, one more thing what you can check is the state table if you filter on the van interface you will see that the actual source which is 192.168.0.190 getting translated to 14140.50.190 destinations 14140.40.12 so that basically proves that the configuration is working fine and that's all in this video please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button